Can you guys see my trusty sidekick over there? <laughs> Hi, baby. Always near me, always. I decided to keep this pillow. Hopefully that'll make my ass on the hand a little more comfortable this time. But as I finish books throughout the month, I will put them in this bag. The ones that I have physical copies of. It's ridiculously heavy. I read quite a bit. But we will get into all of that in April's bookshelf. To recap for those of you that might be new, I have a reading goal of 111 books for this year. I am currently at 67 books read, which is really exciting. And that means that in the month of April, I read 16 books. And the books that I read in April were all all over the place. It was mostly a mix of books that I had been looking forward to reading, books that I got in boxes, books that were recommended, and books that I've had for a few months but I needed to finish that I hadn't finished. One that I've had for a few years and I just put it down because it was odd, which <laughs> I'll get into that one. So that's a little baby recap on what I'm doing here with this series, but I do want to mention again, just for those of you that are curious, um, I buy a lot of hardcover books, sometimes paperbacks. Um, I've gotten really into buying Kindles. One, because they're cheaper and I don't have to wait for shipping. I don't have to go to the store and it's right there. And the Kindle is just so easy for me. And I have the Kindle Oasis. If you guys would like, like a more in-depth review about it, let me know. Um, I know there's a bunch out there, but I have an obsessed with this thing, which blows my mind because I used to be an e-reader hater. <laughs> now I'm like, I, know, I kind of prefer an e-book. Just because it's so convenient, I can have so many books on here and take it with me anywhere. It's really good for when I'm in the hot tub, when I'm in the bathtub, when I'm on my treadmill, um, outside, because it auto adjusts to the light. It's just wonderful. But along with buying books, whether that be real books or eBooks, I also like to use Kindle Unlimited. Um, I've had it now since December. I believe it's $9.99 a month, and it has so many, so many titles that you can choose from, and a really nice variety from fantasy fiction to autobiographies to like Jane Austen, um, children's books, I think even magazines. I think magazines now too. So many. I think it's so worth it. Obviously you can't keep them, but you can keep them for as long as you have the membership and you just return them whenever you feel like it. You can rent up to 10 at a time, which I love. And then there's also Libby, which is an app that you use with your library card so you can um, rent books from them that way and then I think get them downloaded to whichever way you prefer. I get mine downloaded to my Kindle because it's the easiest and I use Libby a lot when it comes to a title that I'm uncertain of and I'm not sure if I really want to buy it or it's not available on Kindle Unlimited. I usually try Libby. I did that with a few titles this month. Um, so just wanted to touch on that. So and audiobooks. Obviously you can get audiobooks from Libby as well. Um, Kindle Unlimited has some titles that you can read and listen, and I do like those, especially when I'm reading it, but then I have to go do something and I'm still invested in where the story was, I will listen to it on audiobook. But I do say this a lot and I'll keep saying it, audiobooks are not my favorite. I feel like I retain the information so much easier when I'm actually reading it versus listening to it. Yeah, so I tend not to favor audiobooks. Most of the books that I have talked about, I've read with the occasional audiobook that I do listen to there's some that I prefer audiobook if it's going to be something that's like super boring and informative I would much rather listen to it than read it because my attention span is just not just not what it should be so and before I get into all the books that I read this month I want you guys to tell me do you care if I give you spoilers do you want more information about the book I try to keep it short and sweet and just give you a little bit because when it comes to books for me I might read the synopsis like kind of glaze over it and then just dive in or I might not even bother with that. I'll just go ahead and read it and be surprised. So you guys can let me know if you want me to give you more or less. I try to be conscious of the fact that you might want to read it and you might like the surprise. I live for the element of surprise, the unknown of where a story is going to go, what might happen. I live for it when it's predictable and I know it's going to happen. It just doesn't make it enjoyable for me, which is another reason why I hardly ever reread books because well, my memory used to be amazing and I could always remember what was going to happen and when it was going to happen. Um, so sometimes I'll wait like a decade or so before I'll read a book again. I did that with uh, the His Dark Materials by Philip Pullman, which I am obsessed with and I love the new series and I'm just waiting for the book three. <sighs> but I read that one back in the day in like 2010 and then I read it again in 2019. And yeah, 
it was enjoyable. Even though I knew it was going to happen, it was still kind of fresh and juicy and I picked up on new things. But that being said, I tend not to read books again because I know what's going to happen and I live for the element of surprise. So you guys let me know down below if you would like me to include spoilers or not or, or more or not. Let me know. So the first book that I kicked off the month of April with was The Art of Inheriting Secrets by Barbara O'Neill. I gave this book a four out of five. For me, this was hard to predict. I had really relatable characters. I had characters that you just like hated. <laughs> and it had amazing food descriptions. Like it made me so hungry. Uh, one of the main characters is an editor of a food magazine and there was just a lot of food in there. I really enjoyed this book. I really want a sequel. I really hope that she does one. I don't know if she's going to, but I feel like it needs one. Um, it was a very interesting story without giving too much away. The main character's mother dies and um, she gets bequeathed a property and when she goes to see it, she's just shocked by what she has inherited. And not only is it a property, but it comes with so many secrets and so many hidden things and just like dark, dark stuff. And it was just very juicy, very interesting. And I would recommend this book. I don't know if I'd read it again, um, but I would be interested in possibly buying it and keeping it for my library. Two, Americana by Chimamanda Ingles Villariche. I gave this book a three out of five. I'm not gonna lie, the first 200 pages were extremely boring and I thought about giving up many times, but I had rented it from the library, so I needed to finish it. I think it was like 600 pages. It was a big book to get through. Um, it was highly educational, extremely informative, thinly veiled book about racism essentially especially when it comes to american blacks versus non-american blacks which i found that completely fascinating especially to know that in countries where being black is the norm there really isn't any racism that is experienced it's mostly about class and just all the different ways to be discriminated in the united states and also other countries but especially here um, I found it really fascinating. So you go on this character's journey that she leaves her country. I think it was either Kenya or Nigeria and she comes to the United States, I think to Boston and just how she experiences being from a different country and having to adapt so that she's not judged and then trying to blend in and just the different ways that someone who has been born and raised here and who's black in the United States versus someone who lived in a different country and comes here and how just how different they are and also eye-opening to many things especially with uh, black hair care products i never realized the lack of black hair care products advertised in magazines um like i don't read magazines anymore but i can tell you the few that i have had haven't had that in them uh, and their hair is different you know and i don't know why more magazines don't have ads catered to that so Really a lot of good topics that make you really think about things that normally wouldn't come to your mind. So I feel like if you want to get educated or learn more about that, this would be a good book to read. I don't know if I'd recommend it if you're looking for like a story. There was a cute like love story with Obins, but that was like at the very end. And that's when it got juicy when you're like, what's gonna happen between them? But eventually she moves back after she's just like had it here, got her education and she just missed her country and um, yeah, I liked the way that it was wrapped up. I liked the love story. I liked how educational it was, but it is a little tedious to read. So there's that. Number three, Warm Wood Star by Spencer Kanza. I gave this book a two and a half to a three. Like it wasn't quite a three, but it was definitely more than a two. Um, it's a biography about Marjorie Cameron, but it literally is so random. It goes from like her parents being born in this weird little town all the way to like the end with her her daughter and her granddaughter but it touches on things from like alias or crawley all the way to like bob hope and ron l hubbard just a random selection of people i would have paid good money to be a fly on the wall at any of those gatherings the whole thelema movement <laughs> just the witchiness of just how advanced these people all were for their time and there's a video I will link in the description area. Uh, it's a short film. It's called The Inauguration of the Pleasure Dome by Kenneth Anger. And that perfectly summarizes what reading this book felt like. <laughs> Just so random. 
Her artwork is very dark, very witchy, and so was this book. It was very informative, very magical and witchy. I love to hear about her and Jack and their love story, which is what initially got me interested in her. I think it was on Mystic Medusa's website back in the day. She touched on like the scientist and the witch um, and their love story. But yes, Jack Parsons was a scientist. He helped invent rocket ships, like amazing. Um, but he was way into witchcraft before he even met her and she wasn't into it and she didn't really get into it until after he tragically died. Um, I believe there was a show done about him. I can't think of the name, but I will try and find it and link it down below. I did watch it all because I, I find him fascinating. Um, just the whole thing is fascinating. This world, fascinating. However, it's very dark. It oftentimes can be a little boring with the way that it was written. I feel like it could have been better. But I mean, he, the guy who wrote this was going on information that a lot of the people in this book had already passed on or refused to answer. Like Kenneth Anger was still alive at the time this book was written. I think he's still alive. He could have helped, but he refused. I would have loved to know more. Um, so interesting read. Glad I finally finished this book because I believe I got this in like 2017 or maybe earlier. And it took me forever to read it. I got like 100 pages in and I was like, this is too dark. <laughs> but I finished it. So if you're interested in Marjorie Cameron or Jack Parsons or that world, pick it up. Number four, When We Believed in Mermaids by Barbara O'Neill. Another Barbara O'Neill book this month. I gave this one a three out of five. I liked it. I read it and I also listened to it in audiobook and I just hated, <laughs> I just hated Mari. Mari's accent just like grated on me. Because this is set in New Zealand, kind of. Um, and she's an American that goes to live in New Zealand and it's been there for like, I think like 15 years. And so she kind of has like morphed into this accent that was just not my favorite. This book deals with really hard subjects like physical abuse, sexual abuse, drug abuse, um, child neglect, suicide, um, lies, but also love and reconnection. I don't want to give too much away, but basically it's about two sisters and the sister dynamic, like sister relationships are difficult. They're very touchy. Uh, and this goes on basically like a sister kind of like faked her own death. And then the other sister finds out and goes to find her. And then all that comes because of that. I enjoyed it. I feel like it could have been a little bit better. Um, but I did get teared up a few times, but it's not one that I would read again. And it's not one that I'd be like, yes, you have to read it. And it's just like, it was good. Mm -hmm. Number five, Plant Witchery by Juliet Diaz. I really enjoyed this book. I got this back, I think in October when she first released it. And then I read like a few pages, left it outside. I got to sleep in my garden, which I thought was like super magical. and just like, so cute of you little book to do that. And then I forgot about it because I started reading other books and it wasn't at the top of my list but I wanted to read this before Earth Day because I really wanted to include this book because I just thought it has a lot of good knowledge. It's beautifully illustrated. I love the font. Um, like for example, this is kind of what it looks like. And she has a lot of cute like information that I hadn't necessarily heard about these. Like for example, for dandelion, um, there is a tradition of holding a dandelion flower under your chin and seeing if your face appears golden in this reflected light. If it does, you'll be rich someday. I never knew that about dandelion. I like the layout of it. It gives you the essential properties, the medicinal properties, and then it also gives you the plant wisdom. And then sometimes she'll include like a recipe for a tincture or for like a spell, fever view hair mask. Like I highlighted that I wanted to try that. Um, let me just look at this picture of Nightshade. Isn't that beautiful? I just love it. Uh, and then you get visualization baths. So each one that she feels like she wants to provide something. So I think that's really cool. I don't have any other like herb book like this. And so definitely recommend picking this up for yourself and reading it. Number six, Hidden Valley Road by Robert Kolker. I gave this book a two and a half out of three. This book is about mental health. It's about schizophrenia specifically and how little we still know about this in this day and age, which is extremely frustrating. And it was so heartbreaking to see how these people were treated back in the day. Like it gets me emotional, just like 
just knowing that there could, they could have been helped better in better ways, but instead they were just given drugs that made them worse, or they gave them lobotomies, or they gave them shock therapy, and eventually it, there's a lot of death that happened. This family is a family of 12, 10 men, two women, and just all the abuse that they all suffered within that family, and just like the mother just not willing to to talk about it, especially in those days, because they grew up in Colorado in like the 50s and 70s, and just it was so heartbreaking to see everything that this family went through and how at the end it was just like this one sister that was really trying everything she could to like keep it together which is beautiful but also kind of sad because she was abused herself but she found it in her to forgive she found therapy and her kids are doing good um but it still breaks my heart that we're living in 2021 and there still aren't many answers they can now kind of say it's genetic but there's still a lot to point to it being environmental um and trauma-based, like a certain trauma happening that triggers it. So if you're interested in mental health and schizophrenia specifically, I would recommend this book, but it was a hard one for me to get through um, just because the subject matter is difficult and it was also kind of boring when it came to like the doctors, but it was really cool to see all the people who had really been like championing to like figure out what gene it comes from and to really break it down. So that was really interesting, um, but it's not necessarily a light read or a happy one. So after that heavy read, I really needed something positive and inspiring. So I picked up The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. This was book number seven. I gave this one a three and a half to a four. It, it is one that I'm going to keep in my library. Is it one that I'm going to reread again? Possibly, but it's definitely one that I recommend. I did get this one for the giveaway as well. This is a very interesting like sci-fi mental health overcoming type of book you basically follow the main character and you see how like depressed and sad she is and she's going about contemplating ending her life due to things that have happened and just her life not being where she expected it to be at her age and when she does she ends up in this like limbo land in this library if you will and she gets to revisit decisions where she felt like if I had made that choice my life would be so much better and so different and she gets to do that and then she encounters other leapers that also are doing that um and then it takes a nice turn with what happens so I feel like if you want something easy to read something light it was going to make you feel like you know what I got this this is a good one to pick up number eight The Gilded Ones by Namina Forna this came I believe in the February Owl crate box. I was a little hesitant because I'd been burned by the last book that I got in that box. I was like, mm. but it was an interesting read. I was pleasantly surprised. I really connected to the characters. I had an interesting plot, kind of similar to a lot of the YA books, The Chosen One, and the special thing that tends to happen, um, which I don't want to give any spoilers, but I really enjoyed the characters. Like, I love Iksa. Iksa <laughs> just has my heart as does Britta, and I think it's pronounced Kita or Keita, I'm not sure. It's a guy in the book. Um, and, and the main character, I like her too, but she's not my favorite. Uh, so very interesting book about the kind of person that she really is at her core and how she embraces it and she finds out more. This is going to be a trilogy, so I definitely think I'll be picking up book two and book three because I did enjoy it. It was an easy read. Um, and this one is also in the giveaway. This is my copy. And I don't know if you guys can tell, but I didn't notice that it had became that it had came damaged. It was just like a damaged copy in printing. But Alcrate was super awesome and they sent me another one, which is the one that I included in the giveaway. Because I can still read this. It's visible on the map, as you can see, like it's just it's just a little slanted, which makes it special in my eyes because it's imperfect. So it's unique to me. Number nine, This Golden Flame by Emily Victoria. I gave this book a three out of five. I found it to be very interesting. I hadn't read the synopsis. I didn't know what to expect, but it's basically about a different kind of world where prior to that, like hundreds of years beforehand, they had really big automatons um, and now they mostly sleep and they're trying to figure out how to wake them up again. And they use runes, like runes is how they operate things. I find the, the use of runes really fascinating. 
Um, it had really good visuals in this book. I immediately fell in love with Alex. As soon as he was introduced, I was just like, I love you. I never thought that I would love an individual like him, because uh, I don't want to give too much away. But I loved how you have this thing in your mind about how people like Alex are gonna be, and then you totally changed it because he's such a beautiful soul. He made the whole book for me. I think this is gonna be also a series because um, the way that it ended, it ended very much like there's gonna be another one coming. Um, but I did enjoy it. If you happen to get this one, I would recommend to read it because it was very interesting. And like I said, it has really good visuals and um, some things were kind of predictable, but for the most part, it was an interesting read. Number 10. The Crown of Gilded Bones by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I gave this book a three. I'm trying to be nice about this, but let me just start off the way I started this off. I was so excited. As soon as it was released, it came onto my Kindle and I was just like, yes. Um, but I was reading it with my girl Tamika and she didn't want to read it until Thursday. I was like, fine, because it came out, I think, like Wednesday or Tuesday, something like that. Yeah, Tuesday the 20th, 420. But <sighs> so I read it and finished it, I think, within like two days, even though it was like 600 pages. Um, I was invested and 20% into the book, I started to get a sneaking suspicion that something was wrong with the series because at this point, They've taken two freaking books to get into Atlantia. It should start to wrap up. It should start to get like cutesy and tie it up with a bow and bada bing bada boom. No. 50% of the book. I'm like, okay, this isn't it. This is not it. This is not going to be the end of the trilogy. Because in my mind, it was a trilogy. So I quickly Googled it. And what do you know? It's a series. There's going to be three more effing books in the series. I don't feel like six books is worthy of this. And on top of that, they're doing a spin-off series called, I think, the Flesh and Fire series. And since they're calling it a series, that leads me to believe that it's also going to be six books. So 12 books about this world, I don't think it's necessary. Maybe a trilogy for Flesh and Fire because they're talking about Nikitos. I think that's how you pronounce it. Nikitos or Nikitos. He's one of the original gods um, of Atlantia. So I definitely want to know more about that, but I don't think it needs to be six books. And the fact that she made this into six books, I just think it's really greedy. I just feel like it's the author trying to make as much money as she can from these stories and just like stretch it out, which is why I never read books that have more than three, because I just can't stand it. It really upsets me. It just, it's greedy. And so with that being said, let's get into this review. In this book, I found it to be extremely boring until the last 150 pages of the book. Mind you, it's like 600 pages. So I had to read a lot of bullshit before I got to it. And the whole time I'm super annoyed with Poppy. I was living for Poppy at the end of book two. And then I just found her so annoying, so whiny being like, me, I'm a deity, I'm a goddess, I'm a queen. Yes, you're all of these things. Embrace yourself, accept it, own it. And then my favorite character, Castile, his balls got chopped off. He got pussy whipped by Poppy and he just lost all appeal to me because he was just like, whatever Poppy wants, Poppy this, Poppy, and I'm like, ugh. But in the last 150 pages, we got something, we got some answers that I had suspicions about and other characters were introduced and I'm just like, but I don't know if I want to read another three freaking books about it. I don't know. I did cancel my order to Fairy Loot for the special edition set because I'm not trying to have six books of this or 12 because I would have to get the other one. So that's why I gave it a three. It just wasn't it for me and I'm very disappointed with what happened. Okay, so number 11, 12, and 13 are all from the same author and they're all a trilogy. And that's these three right here, which is Stars of Fortune, Bay of Sighs, Island of Glass. Now. Normally, I live for Nora Roberts' trilogy. This one was just not it. It had a motley crew of magical creatures, which would make it awesome, and I feel like it could have been so much better, but the first, like, she normally will do this, where you get 
say six characters and then you get like cutesy little romances that like pair up so you kind of know who's going to go with what um but the third book was with two characters that prior to the two freaking books there was like zilch zilch of chemistry and all of a sudden book three they're like dying for one another give me a break um and i had a werewolf or i guess a lichen a mermaid a time traveler an immortal a seer and a male warlock or a witch warlock whatever you want to call him and all three of them couldn't make me love the series i gave it a three because it wasn't like trash but it was just so predictable cheesy the villain wasn't scary enough like it needed to be darker she could have done so much more with this and i was just disappointed so i wouldn't recommend the series and it was a bummer but i finished it number 14 morning altars by day shield crit i'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it and this is about his journey into mourning altars. It was birthed from a place of a broken heart and he found a way to metabolize that grief. And it just has such profound insights sprinkled with beautiful quotes inside. He has such reverence for the earth and for the most part, he lived in California. So it was beautiful to see my state again through his eyes. Like, look at that, such beauty. Like, look at this quote. Your depression is connected to your insolence and refusal to praise Rumi. Look at that. It's just so freaking beautiful. And I found some of the things just super insightful and just, just wonderful. A good way to start your day with something so pure and beautiful. And there was one that cracked me up because it just didn't want to happen for him in the end. I think one of the final altars that he talked about in here, and it was just so interesting. And I think he has like a course now where you can learn how to do it or become certified in this practice. Here it is. <laughs> it's the puff that got away. This is the altar and you would never guess how much he went through just to get that picture. Powerful reminder that we don't always get what we want. There are forces so much larger than us at play forces that change the course of things and your life is subject to its power, blowing you off your best set plans and casting you out once again with empty hands that were once full. Like, just so beautiful. So highly recommend picking this up and just taking your time with it. You don't need to rush through it. It just, it always put me in a good mindset in the morning and just in a place of gratitude. So really, really enjoy this one. Number 15 is a book about something that I love, which you may or may not know about me. And that is Gnomes by Will and Ryan. Their last names are really hard for me to pronounce. So I'm just going to put them up on the screen. But I had this book for a good 15 years now. And I never read the whole thing. I just had it in my collection because I love gnomes. I have so many gnomes. And I'm always wanting more. Uh, and I've lost a lot of gnomes over the years. They just go off to other gardens and do their own thing, which is fine. So this book was super cute, super informative. It has a lot of like gnome facts. And at the very end, it has a lot of gnome legends. Um, it's a very beautiful book. Let me take it up out of the sleeve. Look at that. It's so pretty. I mean, come on. Just so cute. And I love the handwriting for the illustrations. Let's see if I can find one of the cute ones. I mean... Ugh. The information that's in here is just fantastic. This is an older book. I think it's from like the 70s. It just goes into all kinds of things about gnomes, um, like when they get injured, the kinds of gnomes there are, the types. I don't know why the Siberian gnome cracks me up. It just looks so cold. <laughs> just freaking adorable. Um, and just like all of the things like, oh, come on, how precious is that? I just freaking love gnomes. I just love them so freaking much. And so if you like gnomes, if you want to know more about gnomes and like their traditions and just the way that they are, highly recommend picking up this book. Yeah, I gave this book a three because it's good, but it's not like the best thing I've ever read in my life. It is very cute and I will keep it in my forever library. Um, so yeah. And we finally made it to number 16, Boundary Boss by Terry Cole. I gave this book a three and a half. I wanted to give it a four and I feel like it might deserve a four, but the cringy phrases she used in this book and like the marketing, I just found awful, but she does give you bonuses in the way of a packet, meditations, like MP3s and exercises to really help you 
go through this. She is a therapist and I could definitely feel that in the way she wrote the book. Um, I feel like she probably is an awesome therapist. I'd want to take therapy from her. But in the context of this book, I found it to be a little cringy, the phrases that she would use. And it's catered to women definitely because she talks about how women are women are primarily the ones that have a hard time keeping boundaries, which I myself am terrible when it comes to boundaries. And a lot of the things she talked about, I was like, oh, oh, that's me. Um, and it's also kind of like a little mini psych 101 because she talks a lot about uh, transference, gaslighting, uh, projecting, uh, codependency, and also perfectionism, which I always cringe when people are like, I'm a perfectionist. Like, that is not something to brag about. Being a perfectionist is really bad psychologically. Um, so anytime I hear someone say that, I'm just like, <laughs> and I remember when I was in school, one of my teachers, like in the front of everyone, we we're doing this exercise and she's like, are you a perfectionist? And I was like, no, I don't do anything perfectly. And then she like listed off what it is to be a perfectionist. And I was like, oh my God. So ever since then, I've worked really hard to just release the need for things to be perfect because it's so damaging psychologically. And it's not just about wanting things to be perfect. If you feel like you're a perfectionist and it's something that you brag about, just Google it. Google what it means to be a perfectionist and I believe your mind will be blown. But back to this book, I feel like if you're someone who has a hard time asserting your boundaries, maintaining boundaries, or finding ways to say it, this would help you out a lot. It's already helped me out a lot. I used to be terrible when it came to keeping boundaries. Um, and now I don't care. Like I don't need to give anyone a reason why I don't want to do something or why I don't want them in my life. It's like, I'm done with you. I don't need to be your friend. And I, especially when it comes to making people my friends when I don't want anything to do with them. I've had that happen a lot in like the past year where I've met people where I knew that like, I didn't want anything from them in that way as a friend. But like me being a little bit of a people pleaser, I was like, oh, but like she gives them a chance. Maybe they aren't so bad. And then it comes back to bite me in the ass. And I'm like, I violated my own boundary. I decided to ignore my intuition and this is what happens. So. I'm definitely gonna read this book again and do the exercises because I feel like I need a lot of work in that area. So I would recommend this book, just know that it's gonna be cringy with things like, I got you girl, you got this, or you're doing so good, and boundary boss babe, and real talk, true talk. Just, I could have done without that. But that is the end of this April bookshelf. I would love to hear what you guys are reading in the month of April. Um, if you guys have read any of these books, did you agree with me, disagree with me? I always love to hear it because I, I know I get people saying that they love books that I didn't like or that they hated books that I liked. And so I always like to hear that kind of feedback. It's always interesting to me. But thank you guys so much for watching. And for those of you that celebrate, happy Beltane. And I'll see you in my next video.